Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience, presented by DraftKings, part three of the win total series. Today, you missed the first two, shame on you. Hit the description and go check those out after you've watched the show. You can find all the audio versions up on the Pat Mayo Experience audio podcast. If you rate and review, five stars, leave something nice, Twitter handle and email, you'll be in a draw for one of the $1,000 in giveaways. It might be like 1,000 to one person, it might be 502 people, but I got $1,000 to give away to people who do the reviews as long as they are subscribed on Apple Podcasts or Spotify at the same time. Uh, so please go do that. Smash the like to this episode and in the comment section uh, or in the description of the video, you can find the Week 1 DraftKings Listeners League which is half full already, and we're still like 10 days out from everything that's going on. So you best go reserve your spots now for the best tournament on DraftKings. It is completely rake-free. Highly suggest that you go do that right now. Jeff Feinberg is on the line with me. You're back. Do you feel good about your NFC picks, or are there hundreds you want to change? Uh, there's one move that I feel like I want to change. Uh, a couple things I think have happened uh, and that would be, I guess, my pick to win the NFC East. But I'm not clamoring, real, like, I'm not forcing any issues. But no, I'm happy. I like them a lot. I feel good about all those NFC picks and fired up for some American football conference football. All right. Well, let's get into it. We have the AFC North and the AFC East, plus a Cuss Corner Mini to get to today. So a reminder to smash the like button and welcome to the show. Tim Undergust. Tim Undergust. That's uh, not my name. I was going to say, Jeff, those NFC picks are like chess. Once you take your finger off the piece, that's it. There's no moving them back. You you chose the Cowboys. It was a bad choice at the time. It looks worse now. <laughs> Stems the brakes. <laughs> I'm not actually changing it. They are what they are. I don't care enough to change it. I'm just, Pat asked me, and it's funny that, yeah, that would actually probably be a pivot. A few things have happened since we put that that one out so yeah i don't care hands are off the chessboard well do you guys want to jump into this before we get to uh, a tim celebration i'm thinking at a cuss yeah. corner mini yes let's get into the which is the first conference the bengals conference, conference. Well, they, they, they play in the afc so we're, <laughs> doing division. Two, we're doing two division. we're doing two afc shows as we already, did, we already did the nfc look i know this let's let's begin please uh, Jeff, did you know that Tim got white girl wasted on Saturday? Ah, oh, that must be so funny. <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't playing in the group with him, but apparently, like he was just big smiles all day long, just driving around in a cart playing some golf. Apparently, it was quite the scene. Oh, yeah, I was having, I was having some fun, often, dropping some one liners. How often do you get that level of drunk, Tim? Max twice a year. Yeah, that's what I would have guessed. So that would have been pretty enjoyable. <laughs> well, more on that at the uh, at the turn, as we'll call it. Baltimore Ravens are the first team up in the AFC preview. Their win total is 10 and a half at DraftKingsSportsbook.com at the moment. Minus 165 to make the playoffs, plus 140 to win the division, 9 to 1 to win the conference, 20 to 1 to win the Super Bowl. This is a team that lost Lamar Jackson last season. They lost a bunch of offensive line pieces. They lost all of their secondary. All these pieces, Tim, are back now. And they re-signed Tyler Huntley, I believe, as their backup QB, who you hate, but I actually think is pretty good. And that's the reason that they continued to keep him around. As of this recording, Lamar has not signed an extension to this point. So I'm assuming that gets wrapped up by week one. Uh, is going to be hard to win over 10 and a half games if they lose week one to the Jets, I guess is my question. Hard to win in the AFC. It's hard for just about any team to win over 10 and a half. That's asking a lot. It's not just that the AFC is top heavy. It's deep top to bottom. Like that's, there are very few teams that I think can, that can win 11 or 12 football games. Uh, Okay, hold I on, think... hold on, hold on. This is a Paul Shaughnessy special. He gave us like the level odds, like with the minus juice on each side, like one ten. The over under is actually set at nine and a half, but it's minus one seventy to bet the over minus nine and a half. So he okay, gave, he gave us the alt win total because it's a bit more even odds on each side. So what am I picking here? The real win total or the or the alt? Like I don't know what I'm. We're, 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 go, to, we're, we're going with the, I, I, I am. I asked you about the 10 and a half. We're doing the 10 and a half. I'm just telling people that if you want to lay minus 170, it's nine and a half. So I think they're going to win 10 games. 
So under. So I I, I take the under ten and a half, uh, but not not heavily. In, I mean, there's lots of reasons. One, I think that the Bengals are the better team in the division, so there's more wins there. Steelers are decent, even though there's big questions at quarterback. Uh, the Browns are going to be a disaster, but that doesn't matter because the Bank, the Ravens still have a ton of tough games against good teams. Uh, slightly softer schedule than last year, not making the playoffs, but the AFC is just, there are very few easy wins in there. Outside of like the Browns, there aren't like any kind of bad, bad football teams in the NFC. So I, or the AFC, I guess the Texans and Jags too, I should uh, not exclude them, but uh I don't know. I, I guess I want to take the under. I think that they're going to play well. I think they're on the verge of a wild card. Verge of a wild card. They are the favorites to win this division, Jeff. Tim speaks of Lamar as if he's some sort of god, and I don't even think at times that's an unfair designation in football terms. Give me the over on this team, Pat. We have gotten to the date of this recording. They're healthy. They're healthy. By this time a year ago, every half the team was gone. The backups were starting to go down. There was no level of replace, replacement player that could fix that. And as the season wore on, the war of attrition, they got even more hurt, and which led to some embarrassing defensive situations for them late. I love Lamar. As we spoke about in our future show, I think the 20-1 to 1 on him to win MVP – has legit credibility. There's still twos in front of Lamar to win MVP. Everyone's going to love the narrative if he has a fantastic season that he bet on himself. Who's going to uh, catch the ball? Assuming that, that deal who's gonna, doesn't... Who's going gonna, who's gonna to catch the ball is my problem. Who would have caught it the last few years? Anyhow, they start their whole season, Pat. They have four straight games against the AFC East. So that'll be really interesting. The Jets are rolling out the absolute worst quarterback in the organization to start the week one game. It's mind boggling to me. They cut a guy who to serve them better. Mm -hmm. Four yards, a four yards, a play three and a half in a cloud, whatever week one, get out with a win. Who gives a shit about style points? I can't believe I, I don't know what, what we'll get to the jets, I guess soon enough. Um, but give me the over. I'm really high on this team. Once you get past the Chiefs and the Bills, maybe you'd even win the conference because there's value there. My favorite bet, advanced bet of the entire NFL season, single game spread bet. Hold me to it. Superstar, five-star uh, casket match. Okay, like Taker Kamala at SummerSlam. Regardless of logistics, I'm actually career 1-0 and in calling for a casket match, and that game also involved who? The Cincinnati Bengals. Week 5, the Ravens are going to annihilate the Bengals. It's off of a Week 4 loss, likely against the Buffalo Bills, which will be a look-ahead for them because they played those two games against the Bengals last year when nobody, the Bengals ran up a score. I'm... Big picture, I like the Ravens. I'm going to pick them to win the division. Spoiler. But week five, like, oh, my God. Every, all in already. It's minus one, Ravens. But, yeah, to the over. Yeah, I'm going over. It just I feel like there's no team that if they don't have the injuries that is more capable of it's no different than the Ravens a lot of these years they're going to play the good teams pretty tightly and if they're completely healthy they're going to absolutely trounce all the middling to mediocre teams not that there's a ton but with four games against the AFC it's like legitimately they should be three and one coming out of that shouldn't they Jeff I agree Flacco play it feels like an auto win no offense. Like, well, it's did, embarrassing. Did, didn't you want the Winnipeg Blue Bombers backup to play for the Jets or something like the that? The Winnipeg Blue Bombers backup should be playing over Joe Flacco. Shouldn't Mike White be playing? He's in the Hall of Fame. I don't understand. I could be missing something. Mike White has a ceiling. A ceiling that got his jersey and cleats into the Hall of Fame for four hours. Joe Flacco... Ever, great you know Ben Roethlisberger was amazing and then there was a deep deep decline he got you know to the point where it was little Ben Flacco is kind of to me at that point you know maybe he's already been there I cannot believe I'm not in there and I really like Salah and who is there I can't believe that that 
Flacco is getting this start over Mike White. I'm dumbfounded by it. Mike White's supposed to have talent. They could have literally a month to prepare him for a game, and they're picking Flacco? I assume, and maybe Tim can shed some light on this, and I don't know whether he likes the decision or not, that you have a team, I mean, take out Joe Flacco. You have a, what's the average starter, especially on the Jets' offense at this 23? point? 23? Yeah, they're 22? all super-duper young. That having the guy in there who's not going to make stupid, like, mistakes at the line, not going to fumble snaps, just that veteran presence to be like, hey, listen, I, listen to me, here's what we're going to do. Maybe they feel like that's going to be impossible. a more stable... And also, I know Joe, uh, Joe, uh, John Harbaugh better than anybody else because I'm Joe Flacco and I played for him for years. I guess that's the logic. Sorry, Pat. I did cut you off. But if you watch that interception he threw with the first it's a, unit. It's, it's not about the interceptions, Jeff. It's about, hey, are you in the right spot at the line? Can you call an audible? Can I navigate the offensive line? These other two yahoos can't do that. <laughs> I'm not here to say I've bought any of the Kool-Aid that Tim has sold on Mike White. But it is, how far behind is Mike White if he can't be given the start? Well, he he wasn't, he was backing up Flacco last year. The only reason he played is because my Flacco got hurt. He can cut air. I, I, I guess you're right. They feel like Flacco gives them a best chance to line up, do the little things right for four quarters. I don't trust Flacco to convert third and four, let alone third and nine. Yeah, I don't think anyhow. There's... It's unfortunate we've left the Ravens. Um, yeah, they're healthy, they're well coached. Lamar is an MVP caliber quarterback. Uh, the because people love the Bengals, you could argue there's a bit of a discount here. Uh, I'm I'm all in on these guys for for the purposes of this. Yeah, under Harbaugh, Tim, we've seen it. Like I mentioned, you know, beating up on the bad teams, beating up on the mediocre teams. But if they're healthy, they just kind of do everything. They do all of the little things well. They're going to play special teams amazingly. They're going to block as long as they're healthy. Their defensive line is going to generate pressure. And I'm with you that the receiving core isn't you know, good by any means, but maybe uh, Devin Duvernay can really step up and be that wide receiver too. Plus, there's going to be plenty of pickings off the scrap heap. Uh, from, Odell from these other I mean oh, tell me about Odell then please the guy who can't like walk right now oh I don't know maybe the, there'll just be a lot of rumors at some point he's always connected the Ravens are connected to every receiver on the street yeah that's, sure I think that's all plausible if the Ravens win 11 or 12 games we'll be talking to nobody least of all me I think it's a very talented team I have real problems with their ability to score because of the lack of playmakers on the offensive side of the ball. This is a problem that has been recurrent for them in many year over year, that in big spots they have trouble scoring because of the nature of the offense that they're obliged to play. And you're asking me, do I think they're going to win 11 games? I don't think so. And not in this AFC. I don't think it's there. And plus they've crossed over to play the, the South in the NFC, which means both New Orleans and Tampa. Those are two tough games. So anyway. Well, in the big spot, I kind of agree with you, but that has really nothing to do with the regular season win total. No, oh, it means I need to get them to, to 11 wins. I'm looking at their schedule now, and I, I, I see 10. All right. Well, you're going under. I'm going over with Jeff and the coin. The coin, the regular coin, is still on vacation. We still have Paul's 50-cent Fiji piece, which he has, recommended, he has demanded that he get back after this show. Because since he gave it to me, nothing but bad luck for Paul, huh, Paul? <laughs> My dog got a broken tooth. That's gonna cost oh, no. me. That's gonna cost me eight hundred dollars. She's been acting up. My mom's left now, but but yeah, bad luck. Bad luck ever since I took that. Give the man this car. coin back. We'll, we'll get it after this show. We're using another show. He could have come back to the studio. I could have came it. back. I could have came back. I don't know if it, the tooth may have already been broken before the show. In fairness, it may not have to do with the fifty cent Fijian piece, but it very well could. Anyways, back to the program. Bengals are up next. The Bengals win total is 10, even to make the playoffs or minus 130, plus 170 to win the division, to win the conference 11 to 1, 22 to 1 to win the Super Bowl. I actually thought these were much lower than I would have anticipated back in February when they had just lost the Super Bowl. I figured they would have been like 11 and a half, like clear favorites in the AFC, but I didn't see it then. And I guess no one really saw it at the time. They. I don't feel like they're a fluke team, but it did feel like everything that could have broken right for them last year, Tim, broke their way. 
I think that's more the case in the playoffs than the regular season. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I think in the regular season, like they just went and beat really good teams when the opportunity arose. Like, I, I, I look, I love this Bengals team. This Bengals team has all the offensive playmakers that you need to be successful in 2022. They have a quarterback who is unflappable and who is a winner and who is extraordinarily talented. They have been tested in big games. When they play the Chiefs, there isn't a single Bengal who thinks they can lose. They beat them twice. There's no team that can in, in any way or any shape or any form intimidate them. They bring back everybody from last season. They overachieved last year, but that's and, and, and I think that's why it's being reflected in their win total, that they aren't nearly as high as perhaps a, a team that just won the AFC would be. But look, they're they're well coached. They play fantastic football. They have defensive playmakers. This Bengals team is just absolutely silly talented, uh, and they're just to me they're head and shoulders above the other teams in the division. Like Jeff thinks in Week Five that the Ravens are going to smash them. Like the Ravens can win, but I can't see the Bengals being smashed by anybody. Uh, they 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 just don't get smashed, and you know they remember that game they played against the Chargers last season. Uh, yeah, the Chargers. Well, yes and no. If you look at the box score, yes. If you watch the game, uh, there were a couple every of... point they got was free. Also, if you're going to take points off me, they had short fields. I'm just too. Say, just hit for saying. tats, and we smashed them. Well, yeah. again, and they lost to the very... Chargers, and then they lost the 49ers, and they were dead. A and then they won went six... to the NFC Championship, and then they went six straight football games. Uh, three to finish the season. Three. Okay, so you don't in, like the, the Bengals. Playoffs. All right, that's fine. You don't like them. I think they're. That you think they're. I didn't the, say I didn't like them. You said not, no. Well, you don't like them that them. much. Uh, I I don't think they're going to get smashed. I think they're the better. Like in the AFC, outside of Kansas City, in terms of like rosters, I'll take the the Bengals any day, any time, any place, and I'll feel really good about my chances. And so I like the Bengals here. I'm to clarify on the smashing. I'm highly confident in a one point spread game. That's all that matters. So them winning by 21 was good news or 19 or whatever it was? No, I mean, the Bengals-Ravens game I'm calling, it's a one-point spread game. And I'm saying that's a five-star mortal lock for me. Okay. And it's only one point. So they smash them, not smash them. The spread is one. That's what we'll pay. Smash them. I, am, um, I, I like the bet. Sorry. No, keep talking. What do you mean? Are we well, we spoke right over each other. I didn't interrupt you. There's times I interrupt you a lot. I'll take a lot of heat for it. I don't feel like that should should count. We tried to 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 give our Bengal take at the same time. I'm happy to go last. I don't no, hate no. Them. Go ahead. Go ahead. I like the Bengals. I think that they're they improved their weakness. They spent a lot of money on their offensive line. They're probably they're a significantly better team today than they were last year. Like even roster wise, and they went to the Super Bowl, and they have a quarterback who I don't know how great of a fantasy quarterback he is, but he's just a winner. Like he's just a winner. He exudes it. So I'm gonna say over on on the Bengals here. It's hard not to like everything that's happening them there. I don't think they're as good as the other team we discussed. If that I means I don't like them. Then that means I don't like them, Tim. I am going to go under on the Bengals 10. It just, to me, it felt like everything broke their way last year. So even if they, it's almost like the Colt situation where is Matt Ryan an upgrade over Carson Wentz? Yeah, I think so, marginally. But Carson Wentz ran so hot last season that there's actually no way that Matt Ryan could actually be better than what Carson Wentz produced last year. But if you put, put Carson Wentz back into that spot in another year, everything just kind of breaks slightly differently, and he's just absolutely got awful. I don't expect that from Matt Ryan. And just even looking back to the playoff games, and you know, are they going to beat Baltimore twice by a ton of points again? Probably not. Uh, they're probably not going to lose two to Cleveland once again, so maybe we can kind of even those two out. It just felt like they played a lot of close games last year. They lost a few of them in an overtime. They won a few of them in overtime. They played a lot of like really crappy teams super close throughout the course of the year, and just a few things don't break your way. Maybe Maybe the kicker is just so good they're going to win all of them. I just think that nine and eight is you know, nine and eight still probably a playoff spot in the AFC right now, depending on no how. No chance. No, ch really. How much would you like to bet? I don't think. I I think there's a good chance that ten and seven isn't enough. Okay, how much would you like to bet me that ten and seven doesn't make the playoffs? In but the nine and eight, nine and eight, I will definitely take because I just don't see it mathematically being on the cards with the four teams in the West 
And with, you re, so you think that all four teams, teams, all four teams in the West no, no, are we're talking about winning. No, but with just the quality of those teams to pick from, plus the quality of the teams in the North to pick from, plus two teams in the South that we're going to pick from, plus Buffalo. Like the odds of someone going nine and eight from amongst that menagerie plus Miami. Of teams to get in, plus Miami. Yeah, like there's just there's no. I I just can't envision a scenario in which eight losses gets you into the AFC playoffs. It seems. Like if I don't know if there are betting odds out there for lowest odd to make, but I lowest record. Take a lot of season splits. It would be in absolutely ridiculous for nine and eighteen. Are you taking Pat's bet? Are you taking my bet or not? Well, he hasn't produced any stakes. Two hundred bucks. It's not actually a bet yet. Sure, two hundred dollars seems very reasonable. You better be ready to make another bet, pal. Me? No. (laughs) Next show. Um, <laughs> same day, next show. Um, yeah. To Pat's point on, well, I guess you guys confirm your bet before I make another bet. Yeah, he, he said he'd take it. Yeah, sure. Nine and eight. It just it seems silly to imagine that happening. It's if there's so many good teams, they're inevitably just all going to beat up on each other. Teams are going to Not lose games. Teams are going to yeah. lose games. Trust me, that's going to happen. Yeah, nine and eight in the majority happen. of games, one team will Didn't win. One team will even happen last year. Didn't even happen last year. Okay. And it came down yeah, to I think what? it did happen last year. No, the Steelers were 9-7-1, and one, so I would have won that bet. What were the Raiders? The Raiders were 10-7. and seven. Mm. They even been 11-6. and six. No. No, they weren't 11-6. Um, to Pat's point of, like, the Bengals seemed to win a ton on the margins last year, and that could be hard to replicate. Looking at their entire schedule spread-wise, it's 11 games inside uh pick them to field goals point spread so despite how good i guess you know i think they probably can be tim is certain they are the books are still see them as a lot of coin flip games and i guess that's the nfl for you but for a team that went to the super bowl you love this and NL- oh wait do you remember last year pat with like he waxed poetic how the chiefs were screwed they lost in the super bowl didn't hear that this year about the team that lost in the Super Bowl. Evergreen screwed if you lose in the Super Bowl was a staple for Tim's anti Chiefs last year. So nothing. The Bengals will have no concerns. No, and, and the reason is it's because their production to get to the Super Bowl was different than most teams. It was sort of a fantasy feel good story. It wasn't quite like previous teams that have lost in the so they Super got Bowl. lucky doesn't that make them more like uh, lucky no, I, I think that, to not when they're that young and that healthy and that hungry that loss i think doesn't hurt them it doesn't devastate them in a way that it can devastate other teams i don't know i mean you make a very fair point i think that they're an exception to that usual rule well the chiefs were an exception because yeah they made it all the way to the championship game and had a big lead you're right paul just uh, breaking the uh, the Jets are releasing former third round pick offensive lineman Chuma Edoga. Does, does that make you sad, Tim? Is that no, important? It no? doesn't. I'm not gonna. You know, I was trying to put together a list of my top hundred NFL players for the Jets and tweet them out today, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he, he didn't make the list. So, <laughs> guess that saves me some time. Well played. Cleveland Browns are up next. Be without Deshaun Watson for what? The first 11 games of the season? Is that what they decided on? Anyway, they're... He's a suspended 11, yeah. Yeah. So eight and a half is their win total. It's plus 130 to the over at DraftKings Sportsbook right now. To make the playoffs, plus 175 to win the division. Almost four to one. 22 to one to win the AFC. 50 to one to win the Super Bowl. Here's the weird thing about the Browns, Jeff. When they get Watson back, and let's assume Watson is 90% Watson, because that's one of the assumptions that, I mean, I mean, even though if you have to make that right now, that it's funny, we talked about Flacco earlier and what he brings to this team. It feels like Jacoby Brissett brings a little bit of the same sort of qualities to this Browns team, but the big difference between at least the, the Browns this year and what the Dolphins had done last year is you know, the Browns are still really good everywhere else. Like, they don't need Jacoby Brissett to go out and win games for them. They have a very good defense, especially a defensive line. They have a very good offensive line. They're going to be able to run the ball when you can control both of the trenches. You just need a quarterback who's not going to lose you the game a lot of the times. That 8.5 is a lot, but if Brissett can get them, you know, 5-5, five and 4-6, five, and six, something around there, and Watson comes back, and Watson's good, this team could be really good. It's 
such an unknown and it remains it for me and my lean is to the under uh it will be a while since watson has played if he's good i if he's good from go i wouldn't be shocked one bit if he struggles mightily for a couple games i wouldn't be shocked one bit either i like stefanski i like the lines i like the roster so it does like it hurts to lean the under but it's just such a weird weird vibe there and maybe pat this is something you can take advantage of or smarter more methodical betters there's a lot of like stank around them people don't want to like be positive towards the browns people they're uh, they kind of created the the mess um but you know even as it comes to their owners like people want to see them fail so it's almost like you said it like whether it's a boxer or a ufc fighter or a golfer that people just don't like um sometimes you can catch an opportunity betting wise and maybe you're suggesting that could exist here with this browns number but for the purpose i'm not i'm not betting it either way i do have bets in the conference this isn't one i do have i'm gonna lean under because i'm not confident to pick the over and like what i just said i kind of want to see something bad happen in cleveland well, I mean, it's been bad happening in Cleveland now for like the past 30 years. But, you know, beyond that, I see what you're saying. The issue with Cleveland is they'd be a nice, you know, because I, I would assume people would be lining up to be like, oh, if their record could be this. And like, you can start projecting out Watson games. Could they win the division? Could they hit an in-season win total? The problem for them, Tim, is they might start 4-0. and They got the Panthers, Jets, Steelers, and Falcons. Like, those are all winnable games with Jacoby Brissett. Yeah. It is, and you know, as a lot of other experts have said, like is Watson coming back the first week he's eligible? Probably not. And even if he does, you don't expect anything out of him. Uh, and if the team is good, even less reason to expect to see much out of him, right? Like, it would be foolish. He's not going to be taking any reps when he's allowed to practice. QB one's taking all that. Like, it's going to be very. He hasn't played in two years. You should probably go into the year expecting little to nothing from Watson. And so you just have to look at this team, and say, okay, Brissett's the quarterback. What can this team get to? with him as QB for the season. And I look at that and I go, I don't know, man. I don't think he's that good. I think he's enough of a liability to cost them in their first five games, two or three wins. Uh, like, they, they play the Panthers in the first week. I think the Panthers should eat them alive. Uh, you know, I, they play the Chargers in week five. The Chargers should defeat them easily. Uh, I, I So it's so that's two and three or three and two probably. Like, I don't know. I just to see the team, I see every reason for them not to need to be good this season. Uh, uh They've got a lot of turmoil. Like Jeff said, people are rooting against them. Uh, I mean, I don't really particularly want to see them do well either, but if I'm just being objective, I just see a lot of other AFC teams that are in a better position and their quarterback play is just not likely to be good enough to even be close to sniffing the win total, in my opinion. So I would play to the under. I think this team looks more like a six-win team than a nine-win team. Yeah, if they start losing these coin flip games i mean I, I believe that the panthers are favored week one against the browns by three points already so you know they're underdogs in that game those are the types of games that they would need to win in order to hit this win total with Brissett. but realistically what's the difference between jacoby Brissett and separated shoulder baker mayfield last year who could barely throw i don't know i think Brissett's worse I mean, is he for god's worse sake, than that Tua beat him out of a Tua beat him out of an open competition so i sort of rest my case <laughs> i mean go I, I don't know about that. Well, what do you think, Jeff? Like, you saw, like, when Baker took those injuries last year and kept playing through it, and obviously he was nowhere near 100%, not very effective, and they were still, like, kind of competitive. Yeah, no, it shows how great the roster is. They On draft days come and go, and I really have enjoyed what they did. Obviously, this year they didn't really have many picks. Um, like the coaching staff, I'm just, yeah, I don't trust Bursette. I get that maybe it was an equal to injured Baker, but I don't trust it. And those are four coin flip games that can easily turn against them as much as they can turn for them. And I think that week one situation against Carolina is for a cross for an at a conference game. I think it's a bad spot game for the Browns, unfortunately, big time. Yeah, it's, it's an unlikely, uh, un unfortunate draw for them when it came down to it. The coin is going over. I'm going to go with you guys and go under eight and a half is a lot of games, especially when you consider you have to win a lot of those coin tosses. If they were like 11 and six, I wouldn't be super stunned uh, just because they can they can play a like 
Bush League version of what the Ravens want to do, where they don't need their quarterback to run the ball. They have two capable, even three capable running backs of just pounding it and pounding it. Like they'll have to win a lot of games, 20 to 17, 14 to 11, like just weirdo games like that, which, you know, it's the Browns and weird stuff happens with them all the time. Get some positive uh, bad weather games that they might play in Cleveland in like the end of October or even early November. A lot of wind, a bit colder than it should be, rain, stuff like that. Just too many variables to bet on if you were going to bet it, but I'm going to stay away from actually betting this win total, Jeff, but I think I'd be more interested in a bet at plus 130 than I would laying the juice at like minus 160 to the under. Yeah, that makes, uh, what, like an alternate line? What do you mean, plus 130? No, that's, that's what it is right now on their win total. Over 8.5 is oh. plus 135. Under 8.5 is minus 155. Like, everyone is on the under. Yeah, I get it. Sure, force the pick. Maybe you'd see value in that. Um, I still lean... I still lean to the under. I, I think you've given Bursette a little too much credit. Yeah, I agree. At this point, like, all he seems to be, I don't know, you'd watch him in Miami and even in the, in, uh, was it, would it have been Cleveland? Indianapolis. Indianapolis. It seems like he's used now as CFLs use a quarterback on third and short. Yeah, that's his primary function when it comes down yeah. to it. But I think that this offense is constructed in such a way where he has They're one sloppy. receiver. You know, he has one receiver you can chuck it up to if you need it. You have a super athletic tight end. You have a really good offensive line and running game. I mean, that's the noticeable difference between him and Miami last year and him on Cleveland this year. Miami had the worst offensive line and no running backs. At least now it gives him something to lean on, and he's just not asked to go win two-minute drills. Yeah, I don't think that's the plan for them at all. And I do agree they can play sloppy football. Well, the rest of the league is kind of z zigging with, you know, spread them out. They're, they can still zag, and they're going to play that classical uh, brand, I guess, of Marty Ball. Maybe <laughs> can lead them to Deshaun coming back. So round to unders, except for the coin. The coin is going over. Pittsburgh is up next. Did they name their starter yet? I just assumed it was going to be Trubisky, but Pickett seemed like he I played. Seen it. it seemed like Pickett played pretty well in the preseason. But they're seven and a half, plus three fifty to make the playoffs, ten to one to win the North, fifty to one to win the conference, ninety to one to win the Super Bowl. It finally didn't work of playing the blind over with the Steelers in the Tom one era, but I, Jeff, I might go right back to it. So it finally didn't work with the blind over, Pat. But if you just played the blind to make the playoffs. You would have been, you would have been okay. They have not made the starting quarterback pick yet. I fully assume it's going to be Trubisky. Then, if that fails, you can get the energy of bringing, I guess, the younger guy in. Um, you look at Ben's numbers last year; they're horrible. Even Trubisky, Trubisky's almost a guaranteed upgrade, even if he's bad over Roethlisberger last year. So you could take that into account, but. Ultra competitive conference. I, I don't know. I don't want to. It's, it's weird just to like be down on Tomlin and the Steelers. They always impress me. They make the playoffs. You can give him coach of the year. He's probably like 30, 40 to one. Uh, you know, maybe you get involved in that market. I, I'm under on the Steelers. I think they have deficiencies on both of their lines, and it's going to be a problem. The offensive line is horrible. The defensive line outside of Watt just – they really do – they really do struggle. They do, but they do have the one guy that can just create so many problems, and their secondary is not horrible. Their linebacking core isn't horrible. It's really just getting all that pressure up front. And when you have the one guy, you don't need the other three. Or Are they still playing 3-4? Or are they playing 4-3? Either way. If you have the one elite pass rusher, it just opens up spots for everyone else because so much attention has to be paid to him. I, I can't um, dispute that. They listen. Maybe they could pull off in Cincinnati week one what they did in Buffalo <laughs> week one a year ago. All the hype for the Bengals, deservedly <laughs> so. Uh, what a crazy game where the Bills like pretty much dominate every stat category and they still lose that game to Pittsburgh. So yeah, maybe that could be a sneaky little week one underdog but i am i'm very much not in on pittsburgh at all for a win total or any 
or any sort of positivity in this AFC at the moment. Kind of like here to make the playoffs plus 350 has the better bet that if you're going to bet the over seven and a half, I mean, you can always middle yourself and lose on both sides. But I think if you're going to go over, you'd be like, hey, just going to be the normal Steelers. Hell, they did they make the playoffs last year? They made the playoffs last yes. year. Yes. Yeah, yeah, they got they made, yeah, they were the last wild uh, card. Yeah. Yeah. They, and, and they weren't good last year. <laughs> they weren't. They weren't, weren't good last year. Fault. They got in by dint of a tie, but so be it. Worked out for them. Um and with kind of with Jeff with everything he said, the their weaknesses in the trenches are a concern. And I don't know what they're doing at quarterback, and they still lack playmakers. Uh, and that they haven't improved, in my opinion, the playmaking nearly enough. And so they're like an eight and nine, seven and ten, nine and seven, nine and eight team. So I guess you know one third of that goes over, two thirds go under. So I'm gonna take the under. I'm not super enthused about it. Though. Hold on, you said they were seven, eight, or nine wins when two thirds of that is an over, but you're taking the under anyway. They're they're at seven and a half, right? Yeah, hmm. not eight and a half, right? Ah. <laughs> Goodness, I guess I'm gonna still take the under. Now maybe that sounds dumb, but I guess I have other overs I need to take. And but I don't feel strong about. It. I wouldn't bet it either way. I have absolutely no feel on this team whatsoever. In part because I don't know who's gonna play quarterback for them, which is the most important position. Uh, even if it is Trubisky, like I don't know when I'm gonna get a Trubisky. Trubisky in 2018 when he was perfectly fine as a rookie, and the Bears won a bunch of games, or is it gonna be Trubisky from the last couple of years who's a liability. I, I don't know. I've just, I have no idea. I just have, I have no juice or energy for Pittsburgh. And so I, I just don't want really any part of them. I'm just taking the blind over. This has been working for the Steelers for, you know, the majority of years now as we've been doing this show. Uh, the coin has taken overs for all four teams in these divisions, Tim. Well, I don't know that coin as well as I know the other coin. I this coin may watch games. I don't. It may watch games. I have no beef with that coin. That coin seems pretty cool. You like this coin? Is it because it has Queen Elizabeth II on the back? I didn't know that it did, but that makes sense given it's Fijian. Um, I don't, I, uh, I don't know how I feel about Tim liking my good luck coin. Did, did yeah, Tim just curse your coin. <laughs> oh God! Well, I, not, I don't know if I, so much I like it as in like. Because I dislike that arrogant <laughs> other coin so much that any other coin will almost by default be a better coin. All right. Well, over for me. Uh, division winner picks. I'm going to go with Baltimore. Jeff said Baltimore, and I assume you're taking Cincinnati, Tim? Correct. All right. That brings us to the midway point of the show, which, just like all of the other NFC win total shows and AFC win total shows and all of the spread pick shows that you're going to see on Mayo Media Network and the Pat Mayo Experience throughout the year, it's time for a Cuss Corner mini. Cuss Corner, it's Cuss Corner. Cuss Corner, it's Cuss Corner. He's got the hottest takes with the highest stakes. He should be president of the United States, but it's Cuss Corner. It's Cuss Corner. Cuss Corner. <laughs> well, why not you tee it up, Patrick? Well, Jeff, we had our um, annual Ryder Cup golf tournament. There was 14 of us. Uh, we went to the island. We played, well, we ended up playing five and a half rounds of golf, four of them in competitive play. So, Tim, we were tied after all the four rounds, which meant that the captain of one team had to play the captain of the other team in a one-hole playoff for all the marbles. So, Tim, take it away. So, I did not play very good golf for the most part this weekend. Um, I played god-awful on Friday in the you, opening match. You lost as a uh, minus 700 favorite in the first match. I was worst, a minus 300 favorite, to but the, anyway. To the worst guy on the trip, and what was the score of that game? Uh, I lost 8-7. and seven. He got beaten me by a stroke on every hole. You Happens. lost what? 8-7, and seven, which is not as bad as I lost on Sunday. You like Come on to that. So the I whole played, weekend was Stephen Ames versus Tiger Woods. <laughs> basically. Then I played better on I played better on Saturday, and I got my game back together. And played pretty decent Saturday. But then on Sunday, uh, once again, I just didn't have it, particularly on the front, and uh, played the other team captain. Just by the way, the matchups were. He and I were matched up to play on uh, Saturday, on Sunday, and he beat my brains in. And he went a hole. Uh, I lost 9-7 and seven to him, uh, even though I played much, much better golf, particularly the last nine holes. But by about hole 14, 
uh, I was getting the, res- the news of how the results were going in the other matches. And when I had learned that the only match that could have swung it was Pat's, that Pat was getting thumped in a match, I knew, okay, I'm going to have that this is going to end up as a dead tie. And we had agreed before the tournament, as always, that the two captains would play a one hole playoff to determine it. So I spent the last two holes of the ter- uh, before this not even thinking, not treating them like Phil treats the Shell Houston Open. Not even trying to play them as actual holes, but rather playing them in anticipation of the big hole I had to play, hitting shots that I thought I might have to hit. Okay, on hold, that hold, hole hold on. That's not true because you hadn't played the 18th hole yet. You didn't even know what it was. Well, I knew what it was. No, you I didn't. knew it was a par That's, five. I knew. You knew all I you knew, knew is all you knew is that it was a par five. That's it. And I knew what the green and the approach looked like because you could see it from the practice green. So I looked at it and had a set. So I knew. Okay, I'm probably going to have to hit. Uh, you know, an iron, a short iron on a layup. I'm probably going to have to, I know I'm going to have to hit driver. So I started hitting clubs like anyway. So I was practicing, getting myself ready for it. Uh, played the last 16 and 17 quite well. And then just like a caged tiger, just started walking around 18 quietly and unassuming. I had felt I had no pressure on me because my opponent had beaten my brains in that day. And uh, we get to the tee box. He hit, I, I win the, the flip. I hit a, uh, eh. A mediocre drive. It's in play, but it's not super great. He pummels his a thousand miles down the fairway, as long as he's hit all day. So I, I'm getting a little anxious. I hit my second. It's, it hits the top of a sand trap, jumps in the air, rolls out of the sand trap onto a flat lie in the rough. He gets up to his ball. He's trying to put me away. He takes out his three metal. He is trying to drive it up towards, and he clips it to the le- uh, right and puts it out of bounds. He has put, and then so I hit a very safe third up to the hundred yard marker trying to play this on and four. Uh, he flubs his fourth after the drop. Uh, I then sort of blade my angle wedge trying to come in. I leave it about 40 yards short of the, the pin. Uh, he flubs again. So now I'm sitting with a stroke in hand from 40 yards away. And Pat walks by, you know, saying, okay, you're going to get this. Don't be afraid to use your hybrid now. And I'm like, he's right. So I grab the hybrid. It's a, a play I love to use. It's something that I, when I watch a lot of pro golf, it's something anytime a pro does it, the commentators always say what a smart play that was. They never recommend it, but anytime they ever do it, they're like, that is such a smart play to use a fairway metal or a hybrid around the green. And so I took up my hybrid, took a look at the, the green, see where it needed to go, like Phil at the San Diego Championship when he took the pin out from 90 yards away, asking Bones to tend it for a chip in. You know, I spent walked right up there and took a close look. Stood over that ball, took a deep breath, and uh, bumped it within about five feet. There was another bad putt, and the hole was conceded to me. And despite it all, despite the 14 people following me up the green, like this is the Open Championship, and we're on the 18th hole, and uh, you know people you know, vociferously expecting me to fail, when the moment was biggest and when the stakes are highest, as usual, I came through. Uh, now, I don't know. I mean, if I'm sure people would like me to know how do you get this clutch how do you teach clutchness i I don't know it's i guess it's just something that you're innately born with paul has a paul 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 has a question did tim wish the guy who shanked it in the woods good luck oh yeah yes he did (laughs) well we wished each other i know what happened we wished each other we wished each other good luck on the tee box in a gentlemanly way so the guy that you didn't win a hole off all day makes a nine on the playoff hole and you come through in the clutch i'm proud of you our team won Thank so, you. It was I, a Len, it was a Len Matisse Mike Weir situation. Like, congratulations! Thank congratulations, you. Captain Tim. You now get to you know Captain Clutch. Six years recounting your captain's glory. This every will be, yeah. you know every time any sort of tense situation is happening in your matches, you can use this as an anecdote. Um, for this your is Al captain. Bundy. This is Al Bundy scoring four touchdowns. Or uh, maybe high you, you're so clutch, you could even suggest that um, you know you play playoffs, and the cap the other team will let the captain concede the playoff to you next time. Because <laughs> like you are so clutch. I, yeah, you, the guy made the mistake, and that's how you win. Like, and you played it smart. But I'm I'm happy for you. Might have been funnier to hear all your line scores and then to hear you making the nine on the hole. But um, no, listen, you look like uh, 
It was a great achievement. You in a rocking chair with that trophy. I was proud of you, Tim. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Like, I haven't got a lot of top tier sporting event moments in my life that I've accomplished, but <laughs> oh, winning dear. a big 14 man, four man playoff by myself on a playoff hole with everybody watching and all the pressure on me. Like you can't replicate those butterflies and you can't replicate that feeling. And uh, I'm going to be savoring this accomplishment. So I have the question. Everybody in the PME universe wants to know, how did you reward yourself? (laughs) Well, we had to drive home right away. So I couldn't reward myself instantly. But let's just say that night for supper, I enjoyed uh, some uh, some pizza pizza delight. Oh, you got you got you got pizza delight after we stopped at Wendy's on the way back. I had to have some pizza delight to celebrate. <laughs> I Jack- only had Jack- I only had two little JBCs at Wendy's. It wasn't a meal. It was just a little snack. So we didn't I have any lunch. No, we did not have any lunch. That is it's like true. a late lunch. I was like refueling, like a pro athlete who uses like those gel Gatorades on the bench. Uh, you know, like as uh, as refueling. Uh, I just had a couple of quick JBCs from Wendy's on the way back uh, before uh, before my real meal. So I, even, I even added bacon to the garlic fingers. I was uh, I was feeling it. So is it like the trophy on your mantle now. So I don't carry the trophy. The guy who runs the tournament does, but our names will all be engraved on it as the other years have been with the little C by my name for the captain C. And it will go down in history as the, at least the only, maybe the only ever time. Like even in the history of the Ryder Cup, I think they only tied once in the history of the Ryder Cup, it just doesn't happen very often that when you play this many rounds of golf that your final result should end up in a tie. Uh, and it didn't look good early. Uh, we uh, we lost the first session five matches to two. Uh, and at that point, sort of my leadership was uh, sort of in the fray. And I, But I put together marvelous teams, and we won both the morning and afternoon session on Saturday. Uh, and then we were terrible again in singles on, on, uh, on Friday, uh, on Sunday. But uh, it was a really relieving and satisfying moment. And my opponent was very graceful and gracious. Uh, You know, he, he, of course, when he was down, he didn't try to make me make a four putt from six feet, which everyone, but one person understood that that was the gracious and polite thing to do. Uh, It was a really fun weekend. Even though I've been playing, I've been playing the worst golf of my life all year. And it was all worth it. It was all worth it for that one moment. I would have taken this entire year of golf, for that one hole rather than be shooting in the low eighties, high seventies and have lost that playoff hole. I'd make that now. Maybe that's because I'm just a team player and I like to thrive under pressure and like to be known as a clutch guy, but either which way it was a perfect capper. And you're lying too. you're lying to after getting lucky on your second Mm -hmm. and his team, like, was he being encouraged to get the kill shot? No, I looked over, and he's not a big, long hitter, but nonetheless, he's in the dead center of the fairway, and it's a pretty wide hole. Like, even a bad miss from as good a drive as you explained leaves him in a real, like, a good, oh, yeah. a good miss that even if he duffs it, but it goes straight, like, 140 or now, 50. Now, he- here's the thing. So, there's only one place you couldn't miss is where he missed, and he's not very long, but as a part of this par five, it's, like, pretty flat all the way, and then probably 170 out from the hole to around like 120 out from the hole. There's this huge gully that you can, you can play out of it. Like it's fairway or it's rough or fairway down there. It's not out of bounds, but you really don't want to be down there is, I mean, I walked over and I was like, man, I'm glad I'm not hitting a shot out of here. So he took out the three wood to ensure that he got over that. He probably didn't need to use the three wood, but this is the same guy who's actually pretty good. But if it's like, if it's like a par three, that's 130, or it's a par three, that's 170. He's using seven iron. Like that's just, he has like four clubs that he hits. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think if if it had been me in that spot, I would have taken out my six iron, picked a spot in the middle of the fairway that I liked and just put an aggressive swing on a safe club. But for whatever, I mean, he was juiced with adrenaline. Like you've been that playing drive. horrible all season, all week. You're oh, not yeah. even having a good hole at this point. No, You're not having I'm not. a bad hole. So it's almost like as if I like you just kicked the can down the road versus Tim. He's going to blow this thing himself. Yes, exactly. I think giving me as many opportunities to have rope to hang myself was the play. And I mean, I caught a break. And then I made sure that my next one had taken an aggressive swing of the nine iron and put it right where it needed to be. 
uh, to leave my. So yeah, it, it was it it was weird how it played out, but I was just I was I was elated. I was very relieved. I mean, because I, you know, I didn't want to let my I didn't want, of because course. your performance was abysmal and, and deservedly you were so, and deservedly so. Uh, I didn't want to let my team down. I only contributed a victory in one of the four matches I was in. I didn't have a great uh, weekend of golf, but when the lights were brightest. I came to play, I guess. And like, had you not won when it was over, Pat probably does a um, Phil Mickelson, you know, post team presser cutting you up. <laughs> Uh, hey, you know what? I, I, I can't say I. I had to drive him back, so I didn't want to throw him under the bus too much. But realistically, <laughs> him losing the first match against the really awful guy put us in the playoff, and me not winning either of my individual matches cost us bigly. Yeah, I really thought you were going to win your individual match, and when I heard you were, were losing uh, in terms of match play by a decent amount, I was like, "Oh my god, really?" I kind of penciled that one in. I, I ran into, Jeff, I ran into two juggernauts. The first day, a guy shot his best score of the year by nine strokes, and then a guy <laughs> shot his best score of the year by six strokes against me. I lost, my, and, yeah. I, I lost 84, 83 day one. Like, when we counted up all the scores, Ooh. I was low second to the one really guy, uh, really good guy on our team, but I couldn't win a match. <laughs> uh, that's tough. And I mean, in the match that I lost to the worst player, he also had his best career ever round. He shot 91. Uh, that day. That was by far his best ever career rant. Like, he's not good. Like, yes, I played poorly, you know, stipulated. I only shot 97 that day, but he shot like a 91. Like, he played good golf. So, And, Jeff, the guy that has to engrave it was the guy that Tim beat in the playoff. It's tough, and he's the person who organizes the entire tournament. He was very uh, down. Like his, he, he, was like to, he was trying to hide it, and he was very down. Oh, he was, he was gracious. Uh, but glum and, and I get it I would have felt I would have felt really sad and like the pressure was on him not on me because like nobody expected me to do anything had been watching me golf I was struggling uh, I felt bad like in the same way that anyone who like wins feels bad that the other person couldn't win too and here's the thing I was willing to go for a tie I told him like I don't care ties nope. are a part you, of you, sports you, you, you would have been <laughs> one of 14 people who voted for this ends in a tie by the way like, there's a lot of sporting events, important sporting events that end in ties. Like, there's no shame in tying at all. At the Olympics, if two sprinters have exactly the same speed, they don't do a tiebreaker. Both are awarded first place medals. Uh, they do this in all kinds of events. So I'm, I'm kind of not. You went there for, you play five, four or five rounds of golf. <laughs> and if you can't decide between two teams, then you can't, like, to me, that would have been fine, too. I'd have been perfectly fine with drawing drawing. So the other thing I wanted to bring up, Jeff, it's now two days later and I still have a fucking headache. Like, I, I don't know what's Oof. going on with me. Like I'm This just, is the first day I felt a little better. I'm just wiped out. Like, the, the closer I get to 40, the worse this is going for me. How are you, like, after your... Is it usually, yeah. like, is, if someone was even discussing a bachelor party on this trip for one of our friends that are coming up, I was like, I will sign on to one night of a bachelor party and I, am, I'll, I don't care where it is if it's in fucking Japan. I'll fly to Japan for a night and I'll fly back. I can't be there because I'm just, I'm written off for a week now. Yeah, it's bad. I'm, I'm bad. I'm just total mess. I'm a total mess and it would take me, it takes me a while to find my equilibrium again when I get that level of, of drunk. It's, it's sad. It's not just like Gatorade and bacon and I feel good again. I, that's what like, I would, that's, that's days. what I was trying. <laughs> I was just pumping myself full of Gatorade, ton, tons of grease in the morning, trying to soak that shit up. Now, now it was not working for me whatsoever. No. All right. No, well, let's get to the main event. Buffalo bills are up next. 11 and a half is their win total. Minus 750 to make the playoffs. Minus 240 to win this division. Plus 275 to win the conference. Plus 550 to win the Super Bowl. Jeff, we'll start with you on this one because I'm just taking the over. I'm not entirely sold on the other three teams in this division. So, Buffalo, <coughs> excuse me, told you, not all the way recovered yet. I feel like five and one is probably their floor in the division, and then they just got to figure out the rest. And I'm pretty sure with the MVP favorite on um, their team under center, a team that has improved their defense. Uh, yeah, the loss of Dayball, they might take him a bit to get over, but McDermott's been so good at keeping this team on track that you know, 
12 and 5, I don't want to say sounds like the floor because if Josh Allen gets hurt, all of a sudden they're terrible. Or if they have a few key injuries, we saw it happen last year with the Ravens, that you pass a point of no return with injuries. But if they stay moderately healthy and Josh Allen stays healthy, got to feel like they're the prohibitive favorites in the AFC to at least have the one seed. When we get to the playoffs, different story. But in the regular season, this is the team. Totally agree. Bills, Bills to the over. Uh, I believe in all the hype that they have garnered. It kind of feels deserved. Uh, everyone feels like we're still waiting for Josh Allen to respond to what happened by not getting a chance in Kansas City in the playoff game. Uh, the addition of Von Miller, the emergence of Gabriel Davis. Uh, I, I like it all. The roster is incredible. I like the coaching staff. I'm not overly concerned about Dable. Dorsey seems to be quite adequate and I wouldn't be shocked at all Pat it's very much like in Tennessee where we just saw um, you know an OC after OC kind of leave Josh Allen's gonna make Dorsey a head coach in the next two three years I probably believe in that as well do we have any idea when Tredavious White's gonna be back he tore his ACL in week 12 last year so sometime mid-season or do you think if they can jump out to elite it's like hey let's let's pop the brakes here you get as healthy as possible if we're looking like we're going to the playoffs i think he's supposed to be pretty pretty healthy um is he by all you, accounts i'm uh, not sure if it's the start of the year but i'm not there's no concerns about him um coming back Tredavious White. The Bills are reportedly trying to decide the best course of action for White. He recovers from Week 12, ACL, trying to run out the clock on the injury. He hasn't been seen working out in front of reporters at all during the preseason or during training camp. Yeah, he's not coming back anytime soon. I don't think he needs to, to tell you the truth, but as long as he's back by the second... Maybe. The, the, the last quarter of the year and for the playoffs. That would be the important part in my mind. But, Tim, the coin is going over. Jeff's going over. I'm going over you. Well, to get them to 12 wins, <laughs> you've got to navigate through what is the most difficult stretch of football any team plays for the first eight weeks. Rams, Titans, Dolphins, Ravens, Steelers, Chiefs, Packers. That's their schedule before Halloween. There's no easy game on there at all. Every one of those teams had a winning record except for the Ravens, and the Ravens are super injured, and you both you know, just went all over uh, about how good the Ravens is. That, that is a absolute grinding schedule. So if they can only drop five games, they can only lose five, um, that is in- extraordinarily tough. Does it get easier? Yes, but that easier stretch still includes Minnesota, <laughs> It still includes the Bengals. It still includes two games against the Patriots. Like, none of those are gimmies. Like, I just don't see a path for Buffalo to get to 12. I wrote them down at 10 and 7. I feel pretty good about that. I think they're a wild card team. Uh, and I, I, I believe that they and the Patriots are both going to be 10 and 7. Uh, I see a path for them to get to 14. Well, my goodness, that would mean them winning a ton of coin flips. You know, winning t- coin flips against the Rams, coin flips. Uh, you know, at the Chiefs versus the Packers, like that, like those are the types of games they're going to have to win, uh, and probably win them all. Uh, I don't, I don't, or at least most, I just don't see it. I mean, you said their floor is five and five and one. The division, I, I think it's four two. Uh, could even be three and three. Who who knows, right? The huh. AFC East is notorious. This Bills team is very good. This Bills team hasn't accomplished anything. They lost their offensive coordinator. Uh, they're not a tough team. They're not a Buffalo team. This is a dome team that plays outdoors. Um, I don't know. I, they, they're a bit soft. They're very good, but people are talking about them as if they're the 2007 Patriots. And I, I don't look at that roster. And you have all your work cut out for you to make that case. It's not there. I don't think I've heard anyone talk about them like they're the 2007 Patriots. Like in terms Patriots. of being a juggernaut. In terms of being a juggernaut, a prohibitive favorite. They're, they're prohibitive of nothing. They're going to lose next Thursday, and then we're going to be hearing nothing but, oh, what's wrong with the Bills after you know they, they lead into that Monday night game against the Titans. They have a tough schedule, and I'm not sure that they can beat the moment. I, they're just too big. This is the Bills. The Bills lose. If history teaches us anything, they lose. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, I'm going to stick with my over, Jeff. What do you think? Yeah. He didn't. He didn't. 
talk me out of it. And if anything, you probably embolden the mo- the Bills Mafia that everything's going to be great. Bills Mafia feels exactly the same way I do. They're just concealing it. They know. Deep down, they aren't comfortable expressing it, but their anxieties and their stresses and their, their, there's no Bills fan that's actually co- yeah, confident about this Yeah, if you're a fan of a team. good t- – if you're a fan of a team that's supposed to be really good and you really never – want anything you're just expecting bad things to happen that's the nature of of sports fans there's nothing specific about bills fans why doesn't p shag come on and tell us what he thinks about buffalo He's probably smiling go ahead and smile i think they're, they're a playoff team but they're not an elite team you have you had really really good takes top cat <laughs> just keep 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 it charging throughout the season sure. that's all that's all sure. we ask that's all the Bills Mafia hey, asks, that's just what you keep asked. the same energy after Thursday night next week. Just don't, we don't want you flip-flopping and getting Josh, like, injured or anything like that. We're soft, we're horrible, we're overrated. Horrible. You were actually less, you know, less mean to us than I kind of expected. Um, I, I want you to kind of ramp it up, to be perfectly honest. Well, I mean, when the rubber met the road and I went through their games, I was like, okay, I can get them to 10 very reasonably. I would like it to be few. I'd like to see Buffalo win no games. That'd be great. I'd like to see all the AFC East teams struggle. But, you know, I got to call it like I see it, and I see this team to be middle of the road, but a playoff caliber team in the AFC. <laughs> like middle of the road in the AFC, which is still really good, but they're, they're a wild card team. They just don't have the top tier talent, in my opinion. Uh, and they, they, I don't expect them to be. And losing Dable is huge. Where are it's they missing huge. this top tier talent? That I don't you, know. Like, not having the best cornerback possibly in the NFL for most of the year. But he'll. Be, but he's expected to be back. And they will see. And we'll see what he's like when he comes back. And he didn't play against the Chiefs in the playoffs, and they lost on basically a coin flip. That they've changed the rule how many in the playoffs they give because up, of how many, that. How many points did they give up to the Chiefs in the playoffs? I mean, how many points did the Chiefs give up to the Bills? It was what final score. We're not talking about the Chiefs defense. What was it? We're not talking about the Chiefs defense. We're talking about McDermott being a moronic coach and not knowing how to handle the end. On this note, they're not having good defense. It has just been put out by Pelissaro, literally as we are talking about it, that White, to no surprise, is going to miss the first four games. He's starting on pup. Of course, that that's reasonable though. Like you don't want to you don't want to rush him back. That'd be silly. No, they want big games. They can win big games without him. They're that good. Sure. I mean, he'll make them great. Whether they can or not, you can't risk his health. Like, you got to be smart. Well, let's move on to the Dolphins. They did a lot in the offseason, Tim. And that has put their win total at nine games, plus 140 to make the playoffs, plus 475 to win the division, 20 to 1 to win the conference, 40 to 1 to win the Super Bowl. I know that you have been trolling around in the weeds and the shadows <laughs> on Dolphins Reddit now, and apparently they like the Dolphins this year, but do you like the Dolphins this year? No, this team is terrible. And it's terrible because they quarterback can't throw the ball. It's a bad team. Tyreek Hill is nearly 30 years old. You think he's going to have this type of success with the Tua that he had with maybe the best quarterback any of us have ever seen play football? Write me down is probably not. Uh, I don't trust this team. Their cornerbacks are another year. They still are throwing out there. Uh, you know, Xavier Howard's been fine, but you look on the other side of the ball. They, con- they continue to mismanage their staff. They have a head coach who maybe he'll be good. Maybe he won't. I have no idea. I look at this team and I just think overrate. If Buffalo is overrated, which they are, the Dolphins are really overrated. Uh, this team won went nine and eight last year. Won many of those games by fluke, and then when the rubber met the road, they got their doors blown off because that's who they are. That's their DNA, loser DNA. That's Dolphin DNA. Uh, I, I this just a, a team that is overrated. It's a Madden created team, except the guy forgot to to make a good quarterback. Uh, it's bad. It's a bad team. Bad karma on that team right now. Uh, you you know. How sad is it that they're asking their PR guy to put out videos of Tua throwing fluttering ducks uh, to receivers and then trying to make uh, to gaslight us all to believe as if what I'm seeing isn't a poor throw that anybody who plays high school football can make? Like, what am I supposed to do? Pretend like this team can win? This team was going after Tom Brady for a reason. This team was going after Deshaun Watson for a reason. This team was going after anybody who isn't named Tua for a reason. They don't believe in their quarterback. 
Now you're going to stand here and tell me that in a considerably stronger AFC that I have to pretend as if this team's going to win more games than it loses. And I tell you, that's foolish. Uh, that there's, that's not going to happen. The <clears throat> Dolphins are, uh, are going in the wrong direction. Uh, I, I just, I got no faith in them whatsoever. Get them out of here. Gone. Done. Finished. Goodbye. See ya. <laughs> bye bye. I'm scared of the Dolphins. Yeah, now. you should be scared of the Dolphins <laughs> after listening to Rash, that. After Pete. hearing Rash, him break Pete. down the Bills and then hearing that, I'm scared of Tua. <laughs> I'm scared of Tyreek Hill. I'm scared of everything Miami has to offer after that breakdown by Tim. Look at the schedule. Patriots, Ra- that's a loss. Ravens, that's a loss. Bills, that's a loss. Bengals, that's a loss. At the Jets, that's a loss. Vikings, that's a loss. Steelers, that's a loss. Lions, that's a loss. Okay, so they're going to lose every game before Halloween, it looks like. Oh, then they play the Bears, so they've got a W. Thank goodness. I'd hate to see the people in South Florida, all 12 of them, that go to Dolphins games when the Dolphins are doing poorly. I'd hate to see those people upset. Oh, and then the Browns and the Texans. You know what? The month of November, they play three games. They might get three wins. I'm really proud of them. Niners, loss. Chargers, loss. Bills, loss. Packers, loss. Patriots, loss. Jets, probably resting their starters in the playoffs. So that may be a win. There's four wins. There's like four wins on this team. Maybe five. Maybe five wins. What a trash team. Oh, they're going to win nine games now? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, what a joke. What an absolute joke. Like, this is insulting. You know, if you can read and look at the schedule and look at that team, oh, this is such a bad, bad football team. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness, this is bad. See ya. Bye-bye. <laughs> it's so funny when he does his bye-bye. I was going to lean under, but I don't know what to do now, Jeff. That that's, that's the sounds like if you want to make money. Fade the curse. Uh, I'm yeah. going to put Byron Jones out there, at cornerback. The guy is like one of the worst cornerbacks in football after life. Let's bring him back out there again. I'm sure he can't be this awful two years in a row. Like He yeah, was okay. on, put on PUP today, so he's out a month. Lucky maybe, them. Lucky them. I mean, I hope okay. he feels better, but lucky the Dolphins because he can't okay, play football. Okay, so... Wow, that was incredible. When you get like giddy with saying bye bye, that like feels like it's powering up the dolphins. Let um, it let the so called curse do its worst. I don't care. This team is garbage. Well, you what if what if they win this division and win the Super Bowl? Will you care then? I'll be shocked. Will you? I'll wear dolphins, will, I'll wear will, dolphins gear on the show before their wild card game. Will you admit the curse is real if the dolphins make the playoffs? No, there is no curse. I, if there was a curse, I wouldn't have won a one-game playoff in golf. Like, well, there's it, obviously no curse. It, it sounds like you wish the other guy good luck. Are saying, a lot of people are saying there is no curse in it. Name, there ever name was, one other wrong. person other than you who said that. I am not here to name names, and you're not going to make me name names. So there's Some no people one. reach out in confidence to me. Oh, yeah. And, uh, the, the, don't the, want Tim, 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 the voices in your head don't count. Okay, sure. Whatever you say, pal. <laughs> Did you So you can provide no evidence of this happening. I don't feel obliged to rep- to provide you with any evidence that you're asking for. I'm not your librarian. Really? Li- you libra- so- librarian is where you went with that? I, I don't have to do your my research for you. You can do your own. I don't, you I just don't said you just said that people message you in private. How can I know that? My point, and it st- stands, is if you look at this team and you look at that schedule, that's a trash team. See ya. Au revoir. <laughs> bye bye. See you, Miami. See you next year when you have a real quarterback, a team that isn't full of trash. Bye-bye. Over for me, Jeff. I'm excited to see Tua light it up every Sunday. I'm going to pick the over, um, mainly because I was on the fence, a lot of unknown, but I think like it's set up. Tua's going to be improved. There's there's an O-line help. There's an ideal receiving core. Mozart, Mozart, and and Edmonds seem like um... Edmonds. Oh no, not Edmonds. All pro. No, I didn't. Doesn't mean all pro. I'm just saying it seems like a nice um, situation for them to succeed. The McDaniel play calling. I do wonder if you know a lot of the construct there is ready for this sort of McDaniel play calling, as you know some of the Gesicki stuff has come out and if you're not going to use him as a seam buster then what what's he doing 
Um, but a lot to be positive. That being said, can't ignore there's big negatives there, and I'm not even going to talk about Tua. You got to talk about the defense. And I am, it does make a lot of sense that they, that the new coach kept the defensive coordinator because he's been doing, doing a lot of magic with a lot of shit. Perfectly honest. Last year, Pat, or two straight years, the Dolphins have been outstanding in the turnover game. Uh, it was uh, in 2020, they had 1.8 uh, takeaways a game. Last year, it regressed slightly to 1.5 takeaways a game. Is that scheme? Is that luck? I'm not really sure. But Brian Jones is kind of shit, and he's already PUP. And outside of Xavier Howard, you don't really like much of what you're staring at at that defensive depth chart. So if that defense actually regresses and those turnovers disappear, much like we talked about, or that's a real fear in Dallas, this team could be in way in a in a sense of trouble that no one is really acknowledging. They're all just so hyper-focused on... I'm acknowledging it. Tua and the offense. Yeah, being that's better, right. Which this it de- probably should and will be. This do- this defense has potential to be bottom five. It really does. The turnovers disappear. They're in a heap of trouble. Well, it's not even that the turnover... I mean, part of that is a part of the offense as well. Like, it's not like Tua was a huge turnover machine. He just wasn't getting first downs. Uh, the, the turnover on downs don't count in the turnover department when you look at the ratio. So, if Tua starts throwing picks all the time, yeah, it's going to be pretty difficult. But I agree with you. It does seem like, especially during that win streak last season, that they just had the one key takeaway every single game that just gave them the game. That... It's hard to bank on that. If I'm going to hold that against the Bengals and with the weird ways that they pulled out games and hurt the Colts for things like that, I can't not hurt the Dolphins. I just I'm just going against Curse at this point because you know they're probably like a seven and nine, nine and seven team. They're probably somewhere in that range. Like they have a lot of easy games. Like Tim read through their schedule, he doesn't think they're easy games. But I look at it and be like, the Lions, perfect. The Bears, perfect. The Jets, well, twice, I gave them, perfect. I gave them wins against the the Bears. So you gave them one yeah, of those. They win all their November games. They win all their November games. I don't see a W on that schedule before Halloween. And I guess the interesting thing to to you know, Flores, this team always started horribly, then went on some incredible win streak. Um, yeah, they got to avoid that. But I'm mean, Waddle. That's another thing. He hasn't practiced in a really long time, and maybe it's time to start being a little concerned there. I'm not. I'm not sure. I mean, it's easy to say Tua will be improved. What level of improvement actually gets him credit for any success or allows him to keep his job? It's a whole other conversation. Let's move to the main event. The New York Jets are up next. The New York Jets' win total is 5.5. They're 7-1 to one to make the playoffs at DraftKings Sportsbook. 28-1 to one to win this division. 75-1 to one to win the conference and 130 to 1 to win the Super Bowl. Jeff, as of I want to say 9 days ago, Tim had them 8 no before Halloween. He's got the Dolphins 0 and 8 before Halloween. He just gave us. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you sit on this? Cuz this team is horrible. I I don't see how they get to 5 and a half wins unless the Patriots are really really bad, but I I don't get what's really to like about this team. Um, I don't hate the team. Okay. I, um, well, they're your second favorite team. In some respects, they are. I'm going to pick them to actually hit this over, Pat. And before Zach Wilson got hurt, I would have come on here and said, Zach Wilson over 21 and a half touchdowns. Kind of felt like one of the best prop numbers out there when you consider how many he threw last year. Um, I don't know. There's a lot to unpack with the Jets. I do like them to be, oh, I'm going to pick them over. So I'm not going to come here and be negative either. Um, But I genuinely think that they are improved. And I like the head coach. I see six wins from from this football team. I don't see them winning a soul with Joe Flacco, though. When, When do you think their first hinge game is, Tim? Is it week two against the Browns? No, I doubt it. Although I'm delighted to grab... I'm delighted to play the Browns that early in the season. That that that's nice. I mean, look, the fact of the matter is, there's just there's big question marks all over this team. 
uh, in terms of like, can certain guys hit their upside? Carl Lawson is one of the best pass rushers in football. Missed all last year with an injury. What will he be like coming back? Will he be what he looked like in 2020? Or will he be significantly hobbled? Huge question mark. Sauce Gardner was the best cornerback in, the, in college last year. What will he look like coming into the pros? It's a big question. Can he actually hit that upside? If he can, he can be fantastic. If he can't, then the Jets are going to struggle uh, in the defensive backfield. What does the offensive line do? Lakin Tomlinson. And, uh, you know, you bring on him and you bring in Dwayne Brown, both pro bowlers last year. Will they be able to play again at that level? Will Elijah Vera Tucker make that slight jump that he was moving towards last year to become a pro bowl caliber player that he was drafted to be? So the offensive line has a couple of really nice pieces. Will they gel? Will they work? It's a huge question. The receiving staff has talent, but will they, will they match it? Will Corey Davis look better than he looked last year? He looked more like 2020 than 2021. Will Berrios continue to be scrappy? What about Garrett Wilson? Will he be who we saw in Columbus? It's a big question mark. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. And then, of course, at quarterback, when Zach comes back, I'm thinking maybe week three or whatever, uh, like how will he play? Will he show the, the guy he was? was at the end of last year where he wasn't making mistakes and being a little more confident and he's gelling with the receivers or will he make dumb mistakes and will he make impatient throws i don't know there's a ton of question marks i think the jets are in some ways one of the harder teams to cap because they have such a massive range of outcomes that could be from very 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 few wins to several wins they're a very hard team to predict well you have them the- you have them at at least 10 wins what is your no. You just said they were making. The, you just said they were making the playoffs, and then you bet me that no nine-win team would make the playoffs. So which is it? So I didn't say they were going to make the playoffs. I, yeah. I said they could be resting all their starters at that point if they're making the playoffs. I'm going to finally peg the number. I've been asked to peg a number. I'm going to peg a number at eight and nine. No, 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 no. You is, had them oh, at so fucking the, eight and zero oh last week before Halloween. So, I have had to give this series again. This is like a March Madness bracket where I'm free to adjust however I want till I'm forced to put this is cowardly. Cowardly. No, it's it's sincere. No, it's really not because this has not reflected anything you've said so far this offseason, except for when it looked like Zach Wilson blew out his knee and you said they'd go 0 and 17. As I've given it more because of the, it's a huge, I'm picking right in the middle of the range of outcomes, sort of thing. Like I think this team has the potential to win 12, 11. 13 games. I think this team has the potential to win one game or two games. I think there's a, so many. How questions. is that possible? How, how is it possible that you have because to, of all the, these things? Going no, wrong no, way. that that is that, that is not. You can say this about any team. No, oh, but I think we're, we're, the Jets are more accept, are exceptional in that fact. Maybe it's because I know them better than any team. I don't know, but I just feel like there are so many unknowable things. You're the only person who sees this many range of outcomes. I see a massive range of outcomes from like absolutely atrocious to like playing football deep into January. Yeah. I see both outcomes. Yeah. But I'm going to go with eight and nine. I'm not going to be called a homer. Right in the I'm middle. Not be called an, I am going to go right in what I believe is right in the middle. I'm going to take the over, but I'm not going to take the playoffs on this team. I'm going to go eight and nine. And I'm going to feel good about that. But you wouldn't even bet an alternate over of seven and a half or eight. I'm not because I I I feel like it's too unstable. I feel like I've got nitroglycerin in my hands and I'm unwilling to to be risky with it. Sounds like this I, could I explode, don't see such a it, lo- like you have the ceiling and floor so much wider than anybody. Of people. This team could be the Bengals from last year. If all oh those my cards fall the right way, if everything <laughs> fell the right way. There's no doubt in my mind with the talent they have, and with the with what with, with what I what I just laid out. If everything sort of fell the right way, if they end up having two guys on the O line who were Pro Bowlers last year, continue to be Pro Bowlers this year. If Wilson he plays fantastic wide receiver as he did in college, and if Corey Wilson or sorry, if Corey Davis and the slot receivers Barrios and uh, Elijah Moore play up to their potential. And if Lawson is back to being a sack machine, and if Sauce Gardner does continue to be the lockdown corner everyone's afraid of, yeah, ain't no one beating them. There's no doubt in my mind about that. As long as Zach plays fine. But any or all of those things could turn the other way. And I'm not foolish. I understand. No, you are foolish because you're here saying they could, could be, be last year's Bengals or they could, they could be. be last year's Jaguars. Which yeah. one? I think they. I think there's a – okay, well, I mean – 
in probability, there are ranges of outcomes. And I'm saying that there's a huge bell curve on this team. And I'm picking right in the center of what I think it is. I think that's the smart, safe, intelligent option. Uh, I'm hoping they do a lot better. My sights are set on something big, but I'm also mature enough to know that that is the, not the likeliest outcome. And the people here are entitled to my honest and unguarded beliefs, which is that eight and nine is right in the center of what I think could happen and therefore the number I am providing. And you can act accordingly uh, based on that opinion. Paul, you had something to say. Is it Tim won't reveal what he truly thinks because he doesn't want to get made fun of? No, you know when like touts pick everybody on the board. So oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so very, I'm very convic- familiar so they with that. Victory lap. I feel like that's what just happened right there. Yeah, just Tim covered Cam's everything. PGA star leaderboard as wow, the Jets shot, season. Shots at Cam again, eh? Yeah, yes. inter show <laughs> rivalry. Inter show <laughs> rivalry. Cam, or, Tim covered everything from like two and two and fifteen to Super Bowl <laughs> with that response. <laughs> That's all. That's all I really thought about it. Uh, that's bad. Bad work by you, by the way. I'm going way under here. I can see how they could get to six wins, like they have nine-ish winnable games on their schedule. But Zach Wilson fucking sucks. So they might win no, more we games. We don't know that. Yeah, we, we do. Literally don't. We, know we, we watch it. No, we watch. We, we watch. We watch you might not know. This is the same. This is the same. This is the same fucking conversation you had with me with Darnold for five fucking years, and he fucking sucked every single year. Hey, did I get your argument, Jeff? Jeff, who was right? Who was wrong? Logical fallacy. Jeff, who was wrong? You and Tim were wrong. What does one have to do with the other? That was right. We were wrong. What does one have to do with the other? Because I have now, I watched Darnold play. I gave him the benefit of the doubt. I gave my assessment, and he was fucking terrible. I watched Zach Wilson play, and you know what he is? He's fucking terrible. Well, again, no, literally no one but you is saying that. Everyone else is saying, big old question. Yeah, well, you, you, just no to- you just told me before the show started that everyone is saying that the Jets' wide receivers might be top five in the league. Everyone's oh, yeah, everyone's saying that. that's exactly there's, there's what you said, there. Jeff. There's a lot of talent. Jeff, I never put a number on it. I'm not Jeff, that dumb. I know it'll be thrown on my Jeff. Team. I don't know. Like he uses terms like a sleeping giant or you know yeah. a monster. So he's he is sort of again playing his range of of outcomes very wide with. With I don't see why I'm not allowed to do this. I, I don't see why I'm not allowed to be realistic. It's in only because of, of how you play the whole summer, and then we get here, and you're like, oh, I'm going to be sit on the fence. I mean, and you're not sitting on the fence because you're picking an over and projecting two and a half wins over their win total. Yeah, there you but, go. But for you and how you talk it all, all season, from essentially the tweet you send out at Thanksgiving <laughs> yearly, stating by this time next year the jets will be clinching a playoff spot and it'll be glorious from that moment till right now outside of the wilson injury 48 hour scare you can't then come here and do this that's what i think the issue is yeah you can't claim you can't you can't you can't claim that they potentially have the best player at every position in football but yeah they could go 2 and 15 too who knows well, if everything goes the wrong way, but like, like I said, their ceiling is as high as the Sistine Chapel, but their floor is very low. Paul, you can't claim that your quarterback is Mahomesian and then say that we don't know. We don't know if he's good or not. Like you, you call him Mahomesian I mean, yeah. as of August 10th. That was and, and, oh, I stand by that. And, and, his, and earlier like, in this show, you said this that Mahomes might be the best quarterback we've ever seen. Well, when I said Mahomesian, I mean everyone knows exactly what I mean. Is that he's got mannerisms and a throwing style that approximates sort of the things that Mahomes does with his change of angle, with his release point, stuff like that. See, I look at the term Mahomesian, and I literally think of it as that player isn't Mahomes, but you see some things, like even the slightest tendencies yes. of Mahomes. Like a guy who isn't Mahomesian or like does some great things is almost not even worth drafting at this point in this modern. Well, so that's a very, that's a fair either chasing. That's a fair so, rejoinder. so, so every quarterback who plays is somewhat Mahomesian then Jeff. So Mitch, no, Trubi- Mitch, Trubisky, only- Mitch Trubisky, Mitch Trubisky, kind of Mahomesian. No. Yeah. They're the same height. They got no they're, they're, they're the same height and they have a big arm. Let's go. 
That's why he was drafted. No, just sometimes your eyeballs see something. You're like, holy shit. I really only see Mahomes and one other guy do that. I'm really excited. My guy might have like that in the bag of tricks. You know, Doug, you have to have all the. So, so he, the he throw, so he, so he throw, so he throws sidearm. So he's fucking Mahomes. He's not Doug Flutie. No, no I'm not saying that there. The, uh, I don't want to do this. Do it. The ceiling tape from Zach Wilson oh my last God. year had so many incredible throws, man. Is it so? Like, so so he's basically fucking Sam Darnold 2.0. Oh, my God. You would never no, believe. I, I, but, Jeff, I see it on tape. He had no, 10 Sam, good no, plays but, last year. That's amazing. No, what that's the, you're not doing what I'm it, saying. You're doing it all over again. <laughs> no, just, it's the same conversation. Second the same favorite team. talking points. You're right. And there are layers that are the same. But the bottom, the point that I'm essentially just trying to make is if you don't have that insane ceiling, it's not even worth, like, chasing some mediocrity. Exactly. So I'd rather see some of that ceiling and then find out you're horrible. Um, because you're useless to me. Without those ceiling plays. I, I mean, guess that's, that's what I'm trying that's to say. Absolutely well said, Jeff. I, I agree with you. Well, the good news for Zach Wilson, it doesn't look like he's going to weigh 400 pounds in two years, like Darnold did. So that's at least a positive in that front. So you don't have to worry about that part of it. But big, and, under, big under for me on this one. And Come I on. don't think like older ladies get mono like youth. Do. <laughs> I mean, he was the talk of the offseason. You got to give him that. And For, Strevler was the MVP of the preseason. And he you probably him. was. No, uh, no, I, I no, he wasn't. It, they, they named, uh, who was it they named MVP of the preseason? It got uh, it got sent to us the other day, Tim. Wasn't it someone on the Dolphins? Straveller should have won. I don't agree with having cut him, Jeff. I think he was a good player. I'm hoping that we grab him for the practice squad. Two straight squad. years, preseason MVP on the Jets. I think we should keep him for the practice squad. The Jets, I saw some of the Jets haven't lost a preseason game like 1,100 days or something. Uh, we tend to play well in the preseason. We won all our preseason games this year. That Ravens game week one is an interesting test. I don't know. I just don't know what I expect out of that game. Thank but you. I think, but I think the spread is too big. But I think it's gonna. It's an interesting test. Wait till they pick okay. up. Wait till the Browns pick up Strevler for week two and start him against you. I look. I wish that fellow nothing but the best. He was fun to watch. Good luck to him. I hope he's on our practice squad. But if he doesn't, he finds a job. Good for him. So he's here. he deserves it. You've sort of tempered your expectations, and will that alter if you're going to cry week one? Because usually when your expectations are over. high, you cry week one. Now that your expectations are no, I low. Nothing. I got nothing to cry over. If they play poorly, that'll be awful. But they'll also be a seven-point dog. And, like, Zach's not playing. So there's only so much I can glean from it. The ideal situation for us, because we're going live on Sunday nights, Jeff, is if the Jets win week one and then go full Jags from last year. That would be great. My concern, is, my concern is that the Jets win and I am, am unable to behave myself. Yeah. That is my, going... That's my concern. You are going to give quotable material for the entire football season if the Jets win week one. It's a concern. It's a genuine concern of mine. I've got it written down. Do not overreact. Just to tell my, just to reinforce that to myself. The mantra of the show this season is not overreacting. Let's move on to the Patriots. You went over. Uh, me and the coin went under. You two went over. The Patriots are up next. Eight and a half is their win total, plus 160 to make the playoffs, five to one to win the division, 22 to one to win the conference, and 50 to one to win the Super Bowl. I don't know if I'm getting rope-a-doped here with all like the negative reporting, but I thought the Patriots punched way above their weight class a year ago. They played some very, very good defense, and maybe that can keep up, but it seems like they have the two stooges calling plays for them now. I'm not convinced Mac Jones is any good whatsoever. They go out and they get a, their big offseason move is getting like Devontae Parker, who, I don't know, if, if you're getting let go by the Dolphins, how could you? How good could you be? I mean, that's I'm going to use some Tim logic on that one. Like A guy who doesn't separate and just goes into jump balls is like good for Jameis Winston. Not so much for, for Mac Jones in the way that he likes to move the ball down the field. Like the offensive line is already banged up. There's a chance, Jeff, that the Patriots are the worst team in this division. This is real money under. Uh, real money under. I am picking on the, the Patriots. I'm picking on... Joked early, I'm picking on Tomlin. I'm picking on Belichick. I kind of need it to be a new day. 
for me at this moment. I agree with you. I thought they punched well above their weight last year, but to be fair, there were times when they would go all the way and you think they're punching above their weight. But I am buying into the hyperbole that the media is selling, that things just seem different there. There are people that cover this team that have been to every practice in the last 20 years and say they're seeing some of the worst practices they have ever seen. I don't know if losing McDaniels is so much bigger than we're going to make it out to be, um, or maybe it's not nearly as big, I should say, as people are making it out to be. It's so weird what they're doing with the offense. They lose a corner who takes away 40% of the football field in J.C. Jackson. Guaranteed regression. My real money is on this under eight and a half. I am lockstep with you here. So, Tim, why are they going to win the division? Uh, like I said, I think they're going to go 10 and 7 and win the division on a tie break. Uh, so it's a slight over. It's an over by a game and a half. Not a big over. Um, I'm not betting against Belichick. I think he's relishing this. I think there's no one who's happier than him reading all this negative publicity and all of the writers and the media professionals, et cetera, et cetera, taking a team that made the playoffs last season and telling him, this team has got absolutely no chance. This team is terrible. Finally, the team has felt fallen apart. I don't see it. I think it's still a pretty sturdy team. Um, I think Mac Jones is perfectly good. Uh, he's perfectly serviceable. He's not going to make big mistakes. He got better as the year went on last year. I think he's, he's, he's a fine quarterback. Um, I still like both tight ends that they brought in last year. I think they're still playmakers. And I love that Belichick, I mean, look, Belichick is still there. The defense is still his. They're going to play good football. They're, not, they're going to be sound up and down the team. This is not a franchise under him that's going to implode. This never have. Uh, they they had, even when they really, really fell apart in 2020, they went, what, seven and nine? Like, that's like the, the floor. Uh, I don't see, and that's, and that was with their first year without Brady with less talent than they have now. Um, I think this would, I mean, I think I picked Belichick to be coach of the year. I, I, have, I have real optimism for this team. But the first time in forever, the Patriots are really a scrappy underdog. And people are genuinely discounting them. And I'm not so quick to do that. As someone who's been burned by trying to bury New England many times, I'm sort of a little more streetwise on this, perhaps. And I'm not willing to fall into that trap. I think this team is able to punch at its... I mean, they were the they were the number one seed in the AFC as we turned past American Thanksgiving last year. Like, this team is still very skilled. Yes, they lost J.C. Jackson. I agree with that. Uh, but for the most part, they still have a lot of skill position players and a defense which, while worse, is still coached by the best defensive mind probably the NFL has ever seen. So give me the Patriots. I'm going to trust in – this is like picking San Antonio, right, to, to do well in the NBA. Weren't they finally horrible? Yeah. They've been, At some point, but – Yeah, they were – they were, they, me, they were yeah, me, since they finally Duncan, broke. Since, yeah, since Duncan left, they've been like but mediocre in like going, the play-in not, team, and now they're finally tanking because yeah, they're just not but, good enough. But this Patriots team isn't tanking, and you don't go broke betting on Bill Belichick. And so I'm going to pick the Patriots here, and I actually feel pretty decent about it. Well, the coin agrees with you. The coin is going to go over on this one. I just look at it like the Patriots, have the like per DVOA, had the fourth best defense in the league. It's so much easier, especially keeping the same pieces in place, to repeat as a great offense rather yeah. than repeat as a great defense. So let's say they're not the fourth best defense in the league. They're the 11th best defense in the league i feel like that absolutely screws them i don't think that absolutely screws them that's silly uh i think it's uh that is an obstacle to be overcome but they're great they're well coached and so they're always going to be tight in the special teams uh roles and jones in the second year it shouldn't be dismissed patriots took him and played him right away for a reason he played well for a reason went to the playoffs right away it wasn't the reason they lost that playoff game and they still have playmakers and don't yeah, I know there's a lot of bad press around them, but don't pay attention to the ground noise and the static. This is a good team, and they should be treated as such. They went to the playoffs last year for a reason, and they're not some they're not greatly diminished from that last year. Not at all. It really feels like they went to the playoffs last year, Jeff, because they swept the bad team. Actually, no, they they split with the Dolphins and they beat the Jets and they won that stupid game against the Bills in like the worst weather in 20 years, and then got yeah, they and, the Chargers. And, and then got waxed by the Bills in the playoffs. Yeah, big game. Yeah, they beat the Chargers. Big game. Uh, they did they beat the Cal? They had that crazy game versus Dallas. 
Yeah, with all the with all the bot. Did they win that game or did they lose that game? I, I forget, but I remember I could have middled it, then I ended up losing everything. I was really annoyed. Was that the something. one? Where, was that the one where Kendrick Bourne, like the, the safety slipped, and Bourne was just open all the way down the field? Was it that game? But they also had terrible luck. Like they lost their Week One game against the Dolphins. True. With a weird that was fumble. That, yeah, but that wasn't. No, no, no. Hold on. They had the weird fumble in that game. They also scored their only touchdown in that game on a fucking phantom call okay, but near they, the goal line. Deal. So of course sure, they, they, they would have scored three points goal. in that game and lost anyway. Just saying, like. So, well, hold on, no, well, hold on. What are you saying? Are you saying that, that they, if they don't fumble that ball right there, they win the game? Okay, they don't get the phantom call. They're not even in the game. Maybe you don't no, know how the, 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 the answer. You don't know how the, the rest answer. of the game gets played. Well, you don't know how the, rest, know how the, the rest, rest of the game, the rest of the game gets played the other way too. And maybe don't fumble the ball. I'm just saying the Patriots team is still pretty decent. Um, there, I, I don't, I don't see an opportunity for them to bottom out and finish in the bottom of the division. I don't see it. Well, it's because the Jets are there. They'll probably beat the Jets twice. I think I picked the Jets. To, well, I mean, the, the Dolphins are there. The Jets will probably finish third in the division, and that's fine. I think the conclusion that I've come to on all of this, Jeff, is that the Bills are good, and these other three teams might be bad. Yeah, I mean, that seems the simple conclusion. that The Dolphins do are as interesting as one of the most interesting teams in the league, though. Like, the Bills are dominant. The Dolphins are hyper interesting, and I'm not. There's not much else I really there. There, I guess. All right. Well, that would conclude the AFC win totals, the East and the North. We got the Chargers coming up in the finale of the win total show, and I guess we'll just glide by all the other teams until we get to the Chargers. So please. Review the other episodes. Get in those draws. The Apple rating and review. Spotify rating and review. Subscribe to the Pat Mayo Experience audio podcast as well. <laughs> Sub to Mayo Media Network and play in the DraftKings Listeners League Week 1. Thanks to Tim. Thanks to Jeff. Thanks to Paul. And obviously, thanks to all of you for tuning in. Jeff, what are you doing over there, Jeff? <laughs> Sorry, that's what I'm laughing at. <laughs> I just have some heartburn at the moment. I need water. I need a pee. I just kind of, I'm so annoyed that you. I did something to distract you to delay this ending well that will do it for me i'm pat mayo thank you all for watching i'll see you next time experience experience